Hello everyone, I'm Madhuri, Gaurav's colleague. So last time we did a video on 1571. Now we are going to do a video on 1572. So I'm going to uh, show you the 1572 form, uh, which is a statement of investigator. And um, so today we learn about, so this is again another form which goes into the I, which goes with the INDs and the CTAs in Europe. Um, so here we, we provide the information about who will be our principal investigator for the protocol for conducting the study. And in, then we provide a CV in the second. So I'll go through the form one by one. So number one is name and address of investigator, where you provide the principal investigator name, which is always one for your current protocol, who will run the study. Let's say it's a phase three. So you have one phase three protocol, and then you have a principal investigator who takes on the responsibility of running that study through protocol and through FDA regulations. Then second option, you can either provide other statement of qualifications, but generally in my experience, we have provided CV of the principal investigator. Then third is the name and address of any medical school, hospital or other research facility where the clinical investigations will be conducted. So this is the column where you provide all your sites where um, your clinical investigation will be conducted. If it is a multiple site, then you provide all if it's in Denmark, Italy, France, and in per country, where are your sites? Let's say for US, we are opening three sites, New York, Chicago, a hospital in New York, a hospital in Chicago, or a research uh, CRO somewhere in California. So then you provide all. So you can only see that there is only one tab here, but if you click on continuation page for item three, you will have options to fill in as many sites you have. So you have to provide all the sites information here. And then we, in the fourth column, we have name and address of any clinical laboratory facilities to be used in the study. So how second and uh, third and fourth are different. Third is where your uh, study is taking place or clinical investigation is taking place. Fourth is where your samples from the clinical investigation are getting analyzed to for the results of the study. So these are the laboratory that we use for analytical testing or for any other testing for data monitoring, etc. And then again, you have to provide everything. If you have a CRO who is doing your serious adverse event monitoring, if there is a CRO who is your data monitoring, if there is a CRO who is doing your testing for the samples that you will collect from the study, all that will go here. And again, you can click on this continuation page and add as many clinical laboratories you are using in this study. Then number five is name and address of the IRB that is responsible for review and approval of these studies, which is very important as per 21 CFR 56. There should be an independent reviewing body, in this case IRB is Institutional Review Board, that review and approves protocol and any changes in the protocol during your study. Then names of sub-investigators, you have one principal investigator who, who takes responsibility of all the investigations, but then you have several sub-investigators for each side, so you name all those sub-investigators in, here in this column. And then here in the seventh, you provide your protocol number. So every company provides, if you have an IND opened, if it's um, you have already done phase one, two, you provide your um, name and code number if any of the protocols in the IND, yes. So every company assigns a protocol number to a protocol and you provide that number here. It's an com internal company number. Now, column eight is very important. It says now you have to check one, either it is a phase one investigation or it is a phase two or three investigation. And then the rule out. If it's a phase one investigation, then you have to provide a general outline of the investigation. That is the protocol. So we provide a clinical study protocol, a full clinical trial protocol with even if it's phase one, phase two or phase three with all the information provided above. Now, these are the few important commitments that is very important for an investigator to understand before he signs this form. So I will read through it so that you can see and uh, understand. I agree to conduct the studies in accordance with the relevance. So principal investigator signs this form. He gives the statement that he agrees 
to conduct the study in accordance with the current protocol. So whatever our clinical trial protocol says that you will have, you will enroll these many patients, this, these are the doses at this time you will give. In the clinical trial protocol, you have a schedule of when to enroll, how to enroll and when to dose and then how the follow up of the patients will take place, visit schedule and everything. Diet plans of if anything particular. So it's a big protocol. So the uh, principal investigator agrees that he will follow the protocol and he will make changes in a protocol after notifying the sponsor because once if the clinical principal investigator thinks that if we make this during a study, he sees many observations and then he realizes that if we make this change, the study will benefit. So he has to notify the sponsor of the changes that he is proposing. Then the sponsor, um, if, he, if the sponsor accepts those changes, then we have to submit to the FDN concerning authorities as well as to the IRB for the approval of those changes. Once we have an approval of that new protocol with those changes, then only we can implement that new protocol version. Let's say initial was version one with the changes is now version two only after the FDN IRB approval. I agree to personally conduct or supervise the described investigations. Then the principal investigator confirms that he agreed to inform any patients or any persons used as controls that the drugs are being used for investigational purposes. Here, it's the duty of a principal investigator to take the informed consent and explain and, ex and explain that uh, this is The principal investigator has to take the informed consent before he treats any patient or enrolls any patient into the study and explain them that this is an investigational drug and it includes potential risks and side effects. And then um, as well as that IRB approval has been met as per requirements of 21 CFR part 56. Then this uh, principal investigator agrees to report the sponsor adverse experiences so you must be knowing about the seven day safety report and a 15 day safety report. So all the serious adverse events need to be submitted to FTA within 15 days. And there is a COMS report that is generated. Um, so every uh, principal investigator has to notify the sponsor that we had the serious adverse event and then PV generates a report and then you have to submit that within 15 days. If a death is associated with any serious adverse event, then it's a seven day safety report. So that's what it explains that principal investigator cannot keep it to himself and has to notify all the serious adverse events to the sponsor. I agree to ensure that all associates, colleagues and employees assisting in the conduct of the trials are informed about their obligations in meeting and above commitment. So all the sub investigators, clinical trial managers, they are aware of the protocol, they have a briefing of the protocol and they know about their obligations and regulations and they are well aware to work in this GCP environment. I agree to maintain adequate and accurate records in accordance with 21 CFR 312.62. So it is that you have to, you have to make, generate the data and you have to keep that data. That's what it says that I'm, I agree to maintain and educate and accurate records. And then the those records available for inspection. If there is an FDA audit or if even the sponsor wants to audit, we can do audit and we record everything in the trial master file as well. Then comes, I will ensure that an IRB that complies with the requirements of part 56 will be responsible for the initial and continuing review and approval of the clinical investigation. I also agree to promptly report to the IRB all changes in the activity and all unanticipated problems. So as I explained earlier that during the study if a principal investigator feels that uh, and proposes some changes that he feels that would be good for the study, those changes first need to go through the IRB and FTA concerning health authorities approval and then only can be implemented. That's O and then here there is a date and then this investigator signs this form committing to all these commitments that we have gone through and in, uh, confirming that all the information provided in this form is true and correct. So that is the form uh, 1572 
you can always look up all these what is 20 if you're not aware just go to google and type these 21 cfr part 50 56 and you will have an understanding of what these regulations are and why are they important for a statement of an investigator thank you everyone if you like uh, my video please like please share and if you have any questions on this one please feel free to ask me if you have any corrections also please feel free to comment and i'm more than happy to correct those thank you